welcome back to Aquila Park. Uh, if you just watched that intro video and are scratching your head, if you really are in the right place, uh, <laughs> don't worry, you are. Even if you're not, you are. Trust me. Uh, so yes, this is the second episode, uh, even though it has nothing to do with what we talked about in the first episode. Uh, the first episode, last episode, we talked about building our greenhouse, building our botanical gardens, and yet here we are in a farm. Um, <laughs> it's a little bit of a far stretch from what I was talking about. Uh, but to be perfectly upfront and forthcoming about it, uh, the the uh, greenhouse muse did not visit me. Let me put it that way. Um, <laughs> that's not upright and forthcoming at all. That's, uh, that's uh, enigmic. No, that doesn't sound right. Enigmic? Is that the right one? Or is it. Enigmic sounds like something that would be like. I would have to have surgery for. Um, oh, yes, my bowels went enigmic, and I had to go have emergency surgery detective from the 5th precinct was called in to untangle things. Put it in crickets, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> stick to the script, Chris. Stick to the script. Um, <laughs> uh, we're already off script. We're, 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 in a, uh, we're in a farmstead here. Uh, so, I need to talk about in the first episode how I wanted to do some sort of like agritourism uh, deal. And that is what I started building. So if I actually pan over here, you can see there is a greenhouse, a botanical garden greenhouse over there. But the only part that I really like about it is this. Right here. This part, I hate. <laughs> it just does not. There, I'll move it over so you, so you guys can, can see it as well. So my thought was it would be kind of right about here-ish and I don't know I just don't like it like there's something something too fragile too delicate about it I mean I kind of like it I just don't really like it um I think I like the shape I like the outline I like how it's formed if that makes sense I, I like the mold I just don't like the materials, maybe. Um, I'm thinking about probably thickening up and adding some more details or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, after struggling with that, I had to go do something else. And with the drop of the conservation pack and these beautiful little flowers, um, this is what we ended up with. Um, <laughs> so we go from a oh, little flower meadow to uh, farms and agritourism and <laughs> it's not 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 um, the agritourism views, views visited me instead of the botanical garden views so that's why we're over here uh, my, my swan has escaped and is running a lot he is like running on top of everything can I just grab you and put you back invalid destination oh no there we go just, just go back. Go back home. Uh, please. I don't know where your buddy is. Oh, there he is. Or she. No, that's the heat. So, <laughs> go back over here. I need to find some way to keep him in here. I'm probably going to create like a little uh, picket fence and bring him around. Because um, what I'm thinking is... So, you just watched the intro video. You, you saw what we've got. So, we've got you know cows. We've got llamas. We've got sheep. Um, I'm going to download the booster mod and drop some roosters into our little chicken coop here. But my thought is, like, this is more of, uh, like, the cafe, the seasonal area. And then over here, we have, like, festivals and, you know, more along the lines of, uh, like, like holiday events kind of thing. So come over here, come for the uh, come for the pumpkin festival where you drop a bunch of pumpkins in the field and you go pick them. Come for the uh, 
summer concert festival or something where we, I don't know, put the orchestra up in the hills. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, but basically that's one thing like over here would be more like grass parking and like um, arts and craft shows, little pavilion tents, that sort of thing happening over here, little, little fair. Um, and then over here is more like, you know, we, we have our school group come up, the bus pulls up, drops off a bunch of kids, and then maybe goes to parks over at the zoo or something. Like we do a two day or like a two part deal where they come over here for the morning, you know, one group comes over here in the morning and then they have, you know, lunch um, at like a little cafe or something with all the produce that they've grown here. Um, and then, you know, they'll go over to the zoo and the botanical gardens for the other half of the day, uh, which would solve this problem. <laughs> so I didn't think this would happen. I, I figured since the, there's no, so the entrances are here, right? So I figured since there's no path to the farm, um, past the entrances that there just would not be anybody over there at the farm, right? No, what they do is they go into the entrance and then they walk all the way down the road <laughs> to the farm, which is cool because now I've got a whole bunch of people visiting the farm, but it's terrible because I got a whole bunch of people walking down my road. <laughs> so um, I fixed part of it because they were going like all the way down here to like look at the swans from the back area over here where I had to set up the... Um, Keeper gate, and then you know they're looking at the, the llamas and the, the barnyard creatures over here, and they're all just like lined up on the road. I'm like, no, no, get off the road. <laughs> so um, I'm probably gonna have to like cut, like close the zoo, and then like cut the um, road here. So I'm thinking I'll do like the staff path down here, which I think would look kind of cool. Um, I mean, you can do a little bit of it here, like but do the asphalt one, like do the staff path, like the zoo's got like a little cool own entry pavement for just maybe a minute like maybe up to here i think that would look kind of neat um and then that would solve the problem of all these people come running down here um on, on what is supposed to be the highway you know like get off get off the road <laughs> but to actually get guests over here i'm thinking once we have the zoo built out a little bit more um i'll have kind of a nature trail that's it kind of right here so this is where i'm thinking i'll push it through uh, but we'll have like a little nature trail uh, that kind of weaves in and around like a little bit of the forest here. Uh, maybe goes up into these hills and just kind of walks around. And then that would connect to uh, to the zoo. And then that would get some people over here um, to view these animals. And then also visit our little cafe restaurant as well. So... So yeah, that, that, is, that is what we're doing over here. Um, I'm hoping for next episode that we will work on the, uh, actually work on the Botanical Gardens and Greenhouse, because I've kind of reached a stopping point over here. Um, I still need to do a whole lot of more detail work on these hills, but I don't want this to turn into, you know, we're kind of neglect the whole Botanical Gardens and just focus on landscaping some hills. Um, there's still a little bit more detail here, like I said, that we need to put in the little cafe, I gotta put in the roosters. Um, I still want to detail a little bit more of the cow pasture here, or not the cow pasture, but the little, um, farmyard pasture here. I also need a name for this place. So right now, I've got Timber Ranch. Um, I'm not super thrilled about the name. Um, it, it's an alright name. It's, eh. Um, do you have any name suggestions? You can leave them down in the comments, um, and I'll pick one. But for right now, we're just going to call this Timber Ranch. Um, and it is the original farmstead. You know, like my lore as to how it fits in here is that this was, you know, like built in like the 1880s or something. It's one of the first farmsteads here in, um, I don't know, somewhere county. <laughs> um, Aquila County, Aquila County. There we go. It's Aquila County. You know, Aquila Nature Park in Aquila County. There we go. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of like it, how you can see, like, the fire tower that we've got built up there um, for, like, the entirety of the, um, 
of the nature park here, and then you even have, whoops, that was too much. You even have a little entrance uh, to the tower from here. So um, it is like a defunct tower. You know, that's why they've got like the branches and everything now, because they don't want you driving up there. But what I'm figuring is I'll make a little turn off and I let the trees, uh, you know, un or, or a little bit kind of push back here, just kind of remind myself like I want like a little bit of a turn off here. And then like there'll be a trail and it'll just kind of weave up through the, um, you know, all the way up to the Nature Valley. You can go up here, you can visit the Nature Tower, hike around it, you know, take pictures. You, know, you can see the, the zoo and the botanical gardens down there. Uh, you can see the farm. Uh, you can't go up into the tower anymore. You know, it's, it's, it's not 100% not safe, but you know, you can definitely come up and look around it. So that, that's kind of kind of the thought is that um, you know there would be a whole lot of hiking through here, but we'll get to that later. You know, you go, you go to visit the little muddy pond, um, get bitten by mosquitoes, that sort of thing. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, let me let me get pop back down here to the um, to the farm. So we have. Like I said, we have our animals here. Uh, we have little feeder stations for them. And these are actually the ones off the workshop. Um, where are they? Let's see if I can give credit where credit is due. That's the bee house. There it is. Uh, so this is uh, Haribo. I, I hope I'm saying that right. So Haribo's um, feeder. So as you can see, the feeder here, uh, it's a little bit different than what, than what we have. Uh, mainly because I think when they built this originally, it didn't have, um, I don't even know <laughs> when they built this originally, it didn't have the, the little memorial screen. So what what it ended up with is like these little glass panes coming out the back. Uh, so what I did is a little modification, I believe the glass panes, and I just grabbed it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to click it, um, but it's one of these little memorial screens. Quick. So it's just one of these, these little memorial plaques. Um, oh, get out of the shot. I'm trying to shoot a video. <laughs> we'll go to the other one. Um, so yeah, it's just one of these little memorial screens. Just kind of tucked in here. Um, and then set to a custom texture that is um, these little food pellets. So the thought is, you know, you come up here, you deposit your quarter, and you put your hand out and the donkey will come up and eat your food or the llamas or the sheep or the cows you know they'll eat the little the little treat pellet um, and then you know you can come over here and eat the chickens walk around do the historical house and come out here to the garden where we're going to have like a little cafe seating area so there's going to be kind of a whole bunch of picnic benches a little little tiny cafe nothing too big nothing too fancy um like there's a, a botanical garden by me that has kind of one of the like agro tourism things where where the or farm driven what do they call it um, not agro tourism it's called um, oh, I'm drawing the name a, a blank on the name here it's the um, not like farm to table but close something like that um, anyway so they grow all their own like food and then whatever's in season they make popsicles and little shakes out of so you go there and they might have like oh yeah like the lettuce and rhubarb is in season so here's a lettuce and rhubarb uh, you know popsicle you know something like that you know it's like little little stuff or, or you know you get buy like a bag of chips um and then like um you know later on you know they might have like a you know carrots are in season so here's like a carrot smoothie or something uh, so that, that's kind of what i want to do here where they're growing like their own their own stuff um, so you've got, you know, all the, the fun stuff that we got from uh, the conservation pack, like these carrots and these tomatoes and uh, cabbages, um, you know, all those fun things. And then also like some generics, like, you know, you can pretend like these over here, they're like strawberry bushes, you know, and that these over here are maybe, I don't know, potatoes or something, you know, something that's not quite coming into, coming into season yet. And then we've got our grapes and everything over here. 
um, in our floating swans. <laughs> I added the swans because I wanted something to kind of swim around in here. Because uh, I added this little like swan house and these little duck houses. Um, but yeah, I mean, they, they mostly just like float on the air and walk on water. I mean, when they, they look like Jesus and Jesus or something. Um, <laughs> Uh, but anyway, yes, we've got like a little greenhouse where we're growing things, and uh, you know, we've got some flowers and stuff that we, we put around the property. Uh, we do have some like lavender and stuff up here. Maybe we, we sell like um, cut flowers, um, you know, at the little uh, the little uh, cafe here or something. So so yeah yeah, I think I think this is probably mostly done. Um, I mean, there's not really a whole lot more than the cafe and with a little bit of detail work. Uh, so I think this area is mostly done. Oh yeah, I also found this freaking awesome tractor asset on the uh, uh, on the workshop as well. So let me go grab that. I don't think he put his name in the description. Let me see, or I should say their name. Uh, but let's go pop over to a workshop real quick. I'll show you. Hopefully, this is recording. I have no idea if it records the um, um, uh, Steam menu here. So, if it's not recording, um, the, the creator's name is called Keyboard Keeper, and it's just called Antique Tractor there on the workshop. Uh, definitely deserves more love than it looks like it's getting. It is, it is an awesome, awesome, awesome asset. Um, definitely adds, like when you look into this barn, a whole lot of character to see that cool tractor in there, you know. Um, there's actually one thing I'm going to modify to this. I really hope they don't mind. But So one thing my grandpa does, and I've seen a lot of other farmers do it, um, is they put a, I guess it's actually under construction, they put an upside down bucket over the smokestack of their tractor. Basically just keep water and stuff from getting in there. But every farmer I've ever seen does it. <laughs> so I'm going to do that too. Uh, I'm actually going to rotate it so you don't see that handle from the, uh, from the other side. So there we go. We've got, our, we've got our bucket over the smokestack of the tractor so nothing gets down into there in the, uh, in the exhaust. Um, every, every farmer I've known has done it. Uh, but anyway, so there we are. Uh, I'm going to jump over to the time lapse so you can watch how this whole thing was built. Um, and then I will catch you guys on the next episode where we are hopefully working on our botanical gardens and uh, not getting sidetracked. Um, as fun as this build was, not getting sidetracked with, with something completely off the rails. So, alright, see you guys over there in the time lapse. Alright, so here we are in the time lapse section of the video. Um, I've sped it up quite a bit. As you can see, we're kind of zipping around here. Uh, I had not realized how um, how much footage I had actually recorded. Um, <laughs> it was close to uh, close to about 17 hours. Uh, I, I did not realize I had spent that much time. Uh, I would have known that I probably would have broken it out into uh, two episodes, but you know, as the saying goes, but having fun and this was definitely a fun build so here we are we're working on our little barn uh, just kind of inspired from some photos of uh, really more European barns like the traditional American barn you know is like painted red but I figured like this would be like the early settlers to the area so they probably would be of uh, European descent they would probably build a more European style barn rather than like the traditional uh, red style barn that you kind of associate like American farmland with. So built this one uh, putting in the little hayloft there, the overarching roof uh, lots of big windows with those little uh, uh, lattice windows. You know, get the airflow moving through here, get the sunlight in, that sort of thing. So really pleased with how this barn turned out. The arctic pieces with the uh, dry stones, I think this looked really sharp. 
Uh, it took me a little while to figure out how to get a barn door up here. Uh, just kind of just playing around with a lot of the little tiny pieces to make a little railing hook hanging system. Uh, but we figured it out in the end. It's just kind of a little bit of back and forth, back and forth to figure out what looked best, what fit best, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, ended up settling for these chunkier uh, wood pieces and then just kind of framed them in the, uh, the Asian uh, timber piece there. Which I think looks, looks pretty sharp. Uh, they don't. They look newer than the rest of the barn. That, that thought is, you know, they've been replaced. You know, that's something that's going to be getting a lot of wear and tear over the years. So they've probably been replaced a few times. So that's kind of why they look newer, at least you know, uh, at least story-wise, you know. These little hook pieces that we got with the conservation kit. I think they're called the uh, wagon handle. They excellent like handles for uh, large doors like this or fences um, they, they gave us so many good little pieces in this last kit I'm, I'm really really pleased with it uh, with, with what they uh, with what they did there uh, definitely definitely adds to the creativity for sure um, it took me a while to remember what the uh, the hay piece was. Uh, it's the bedding piece for the habitat, but like I said, last episode, it's been a long time since I played. Um, so you just saw me kind of looking around for that piece. I think it's been a good, good little while trying to find it and gave up. Um, I mean, eventually I did find it, and it, you know, it is the bedding piece. Um, and I was like, man, I know there's a hay piece. I can't find it. Where, where is the like the hay floor? Um, so yeah, now we're, we're working on the little detailing for the outside, detailing for the entryway, uh, just working our rocks here using the uh, Taiga and the Tundra rocks, dropping lots of ferns. I figured like this little area right here stays wet because it's kind of between the road and the barn, you know, it's lower, a um, bit more in the shade, that sort of thing. Uh, you can see me back in here trying to find the little hay piece again. I uh, did decide to put some little like hay bale looking things, uh, some little detail work. I did add a wood floor. Uh, just to kind of had a little bit of separation between the, the dirt floor and the uh, um, normal floor. Uh, you saw the video skipped there. Uh, we're now working on the outside. Uh, I did cut out some of the some bits of the video. I also did forget to record some bits. I'm pretty sure that was a forgetful piece. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, I would hop in here to start building and be like, oh yeah, I need to actually hit the record button. But anyway, here we are. We're, man, I love this conservation pack. These new flowers. These are so, so stinking good looking. Um, really adds like a whole new level of detail to the game. I love it. Um, so here we are working on the, uh, the entryway some more. Just dropping in all these beautiful flowers that they gave us. Um, the oxide daisies and the, um, the poppies and the little blue ones. Can't remember their name right now. And then filling everything in with the, with the bracket. Uh, going back, painting it over. Um, now we are working on our side. And like I said, I did, I, I'm not crazy about the name right now. Uh, Timber Ridge. Just sounds generic. Sounds a little boring. Um, but maybe maybe that's what we need. It's a boring name. Um, I actually did not record doing that because I kept having to change the name on the signpost. Um, adding a little bit of detail work to the inside, running some like electrical, you know, obviously the barn was built in the 1880s, so long before electricity was a thing. Uh, so just added kind of a droopy little light and added some little lights hanging off. Um, they weren't bright enough, so I had to add some extra lights into the, um, into the floor. Uh, thought about adding a little a couple particle effects in here, like some wind blowing dust into it, but I think the particle effects are just a little bit too aggressive, um, honestly. So left them out. Uh, now we're starting to work on the house here, and I just wanted again another like traditional style house. I wanted to make it look like the house was added onto at one point. So like the left side of the house, um, at least on the screen right now, uh, the left side was 
like the original house, you know, it's got the original chimney, uh, it's got like a two story plus attic space kind of thing, and then the right side was added on you know, later, um, you know, maybe 10, 20 years later kind of deal. Uh, so just kind of, that's why it's got the split roof, why it's a little bit different uh, than the other. When you put this wraparound porch on, uh, added a few windows, uh, just kind of little tiny windows, you know, old house, small windows, glass is expensive. Um, if you're out here kind of in the middle of nowhere, getting getting windows and glass out here uh, would be somewhat of a luxury. So they, they added a bunch of windows with just little tiny windows, and that's kind of what I was looking for uh, here. Like I said, with that attic space, adding some little tiny windows up top. Finishing up the wraparound porch here, adding the front door, a couple more windows. And then here's the porch. So putting on the uh, the fence for the porch again using the uh, little uh, lattice pieces there for the underside and then for the Top side finally settled on a small design where we have a whole bunch of these little, uh, little round beams. And we put a kind of chunk here. Uh, I believe that's just the roof ridge piece all the way around to serve as the railing for the, uh, the porch. And then I added a little staircase here. And there's our house. Uh, really, really simple build. This other building that we're putting on the outside, I kind of imagine that the old well house. Um, it's actually used as the bathroom now. I figured, oh, it's got running water. It's got, you know, uh, a hole. Um, <laughs> like now it's just like a septic pit with a, with a bathroom in it. Uh, now we're starting to work on the animal enclosure. So this is where our kind of like pitting and feeding thing will be. Settled on a split rail fence design. Again, pretty simple design. Nothing, nothing too fancy over here. You know, this is this is like a working farm kind of deal. So I didn't want anything too too elaborate. So just kind of a simple little fence here uh, to keep the guests on one side, the animals on the other. And then we just kind of landscape it to kind of get it to fit. And remove most of the grass from the uh, from the animal enclosure there because I figure the animals would be eating all the all the tall grass, so there wouldn't be any tall grass growing in there. It'd be kind of um, devoid of, <laughs> of vegetation, uh, if you will. So, so made sure to kind of show that as well. And then we brought the fence all the way around back to the barn. Um, do a little fence segments to, to make sure that it's just dragging some fence down in that lower spot uh, that we detailed before. Uh, added some water here. Uh, didn't show the terraforming to add the water because as any of you know, adding water in plant is, is, is definitely a challenge. Uh, but I figured the little pond that we have and this little uh, creek that we have, this is mostly standing water. You know, water comes rushing off the off the hills there, it kind of hits this valley, and now um, really there's kind of a side effect from building that parking lot is that there is no place for the water to go, um, you know, towards the barn anymore. It doesn't like disperse like maybe it used to. Instead, it kind of um, has to sit there, and, and that's why we have this kind of like wetlands there. Uh, I have a little grape uh, winery looking thing here. Uh, originally I wanted it here in the front, but I, after looking at it for a while, I just said, ah, it's not really that, um, that interesting. You know, it, it kind of, I don't know, distracts a little bit from, from the rest of the buildings. So, uh, even though it's here right now, it does move later. Um, I did want some like little trees with landscaping, something here. I settled on the little tiny bushes. 
trying to add another like little shade tree there, but that wasn't working. Um, it just kind of was hiding the uh, hiding the hiding the building too much, the, the farmhouse there. So now we're working on our um, on our pond. Uh, still working a little bit more on the creek, getting the water color right. I didn't want it to be like mud soup water. <laughs> um, instead, you know, kind of made it like a darker uh, black blue water, um, and then just kind of filled it all in with these with these um, uh, pond lotus and some like grasses and stuff, to kind of make it look a little marshy. Chopped a whole bunch of rocks, uh, colored similarly to the. The tundra rocks so they kind of blend a little bit more seamlessly. Added some deadfall. I figure like the back part of this pond is less maintained than the front. Um, it's a little bit more wild uh, out there. I added a whole bunch of roots around these trees to add a little bit more detail uh, to make it look like these trees uh, are holding the bank back. Like there is a road that happens like during heavy rainstorms and stuff that the water does come pouring off this. Uh, pouring out this hill here and then does kind of sweep down into uh, I guess where our zoo is um, <laughs> but again this is why there's a farm here you got this low spot this valley between these two these two hues uh, these two hills and um, you know you've got really really fertile land here as a result so like this land right here is even prime fine farmland. That's why this farm is here. Um, so working on our uh, kind of farm rows now, really easy to make these. Just the little four meter piece, drop some, um, you know, some plants, vegetables, what have you on the four meter piece. And then essentially just copy and paste all the way down super easy to make these farm rows uh, if you want to do it for yourself for a year or two. Um, and again, the conservation pack, adding all these fun little uh, new props that we have definitely makes it uh, a lot more interesting for the, for the farmland. Or for doing something like this with, with, with farmland for sure. Um, I thought about adding some pumpkins. Wanted to add some corn, but it just wasn't working. Um, so I added some of these small little, I think this is a nettle plant that I asked, I added some um, uh, some custard apples here to make kind of a little apple orchard. Uh, I also thought, like, hey, we're out here in the middle of nowhere, we should probably get a deer fence um, to protect our farmland here. So that's what we're making now. So it's just one of the little mesh pieces with, um, I think it's the prefab mesh fence piece actually. Just copied and pasted all the way down. Uh, got the line up and then, you know, again, same thing. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Uh, did angle it a little bit trying to get it to the, to the pond. And then for the last little piece, um, I just grabbed a simple chain link fence and lined it up with the tree. I figured, you know, the, the farmer or someone, whoever's maintaining this property would just, ah, the fence piece didn't fit. You know, this generic fence piece that we buy, right? Um, didn't fit. So I'll just take this chain link and staple it to the tree and staple it to the fence post, you know? And that's, that's kind of why there's that little um, uh, mesh fence. And I figured they figured, you know, the, the, the farmer would be like, oh no, you know, we don't need to um, you know, continue all the way around the pond. You know, the, the deer don't swim, right? <laughs> um, so now here we are working on our greenhouse. Pretty simple design, you know, just four walls, nothing fancy. Um, did have an idea later to kind of submerge it a little bit, so that's what we skipped here. Um, I did put that out because it was a lot of underground and with the uh, sped up video here. I mean, it's already pretty janky, right? Um, but with the sped up video underground, it's even like super janky. Uh, so I did cut that out, but basically. Uh, push this a, a little bit underground, just just a smidgen. You can kind of see it here. Uh, I just thought it had a nice little 
um, nice little effect rather than a uh, house that's just you know floating essentially. Uh, putting on our door here, really just trying to use the glass piece that we have uh, to make it look door-like. Uh, they didn't want to fiddle with making a custom arch window piece. Uh, that, that, that's not really something I think I would enjoy doing. Um, <laughs> it definitely seems a lot more tedious than, uh, than necessary. So went ahead and just made the, the arch piece look like a door instead. Uh, added a whole bunch of pots again for the conservation kit. This, this kit is amazing for detail work now. I, I think it's probably my favorite kit to come out um, just for the extra little added details. Uh, put in the drain system here on the floor, just again, more little details, little um, little interest points. Added some fans to the uh, ceiling. We always see greenhouses with fans. Um, added the door handles and then we started putting down uh, a whole bunch more little details and then a bunch of, of plants in here just to kind of show, you know, like, hey, we are growing stuff, right? Oh, uh, one other thing, you know, that always behind like in the backstage area, you have like unused uh, leftover bits and pieces. So I figured what would be leftover bits and pieces of a uh, garden? Oh, you're gonna have a whole bunch of PVC pipes, right? And you're gonna probably be like, oh yeah, we'll use a PVC pipe from something else. And you put them back behind the shed and you forget about them. <laughs> you never use them again. And instead you're having to like wee wag behind them. I've never done this before, right? Um, you're having to like wee wag behind them and around them all the time. So they just kind of live back there forever. Uh, that's kind of what I wanted to show back there. So yeah, and we also have like some little cut flowers here that I put into those little uh, crates up here. I was also trying to find something fun to throw back here, like maybe we had like a pony riding show or like some sort of like sign or something to put back there, but I just couldn't get it to look right. Um, I added a little bit of moss down here by the, um, uh, by the drain there and I colored it dirt color just so it would kind of look a little bit You know, a little bit messy, not, not super pristine. Um, added a little cart. I colored it black because I have a cart just like that. Um, one of the little gorilla garden carts that we can get here in the, in the States. Um, at any of the little, or actually I should say big box stores, not the little box stores. Um, <laughs> you know, the big box stores. You know. uh, now we're just kind of doing the last little detail work of uh, the pond here. So just putting some things around here. I uh, did put some little bird boxes. I tried to make my own. Wasn't quite happy with the result, so I grabbed the one off of the workshop. Uh, that's also a bee box off the workshop. Uh, and I just tucked those into uh, the trees there because I think they look way better than, than what I was doing. Uh, I had a couple more little farm beds here, you know, making the most use out of space here. And I made these a little bit triangle because they are kind of like added afterwards. I didn't want them to be kind of like jaggedy. Um, so I laid them out and then I took the uh, four meter uh, mulch piece here and just made a nice triangle and then I got a whole bunch of flowers on it. Uh, kind of make it look like this was added after the fact, right? Like it, it's this kind of little flower garden that they added like, oh, you know, hey, we saw like four flower farms or something, you know, so we want to be like them. Uh, a little bit more detailing to the pond here. Originally thought about adding a little stone path. Uh, didn't quite like how it was working. Um, added some more junk behind. Behind it. There's always room for more junk, right? Uh, and, you know, I'm going to come back and I'm going to use those pallets, you know? Right? So, uh, next thing we're adding here is a little pump house for our uh, water feature here. So, for our pond to keep it from getting all slimy and gross and, and mosquito -y. Uh We added a couple little fountains, uh, placed them in here, and that's what we've got going here, just kind of a double fountain. And then I thought, oh, you know, it'd be fun to have a little duck house, right? Um, so I made this little octagonal uh, structure out of the, um, I can't remember what it's called, I'm just going to call it the Lincoln Log set, but I <laughs> uh, was definitely having a little bit of trouble with getting the uh, foundation. Finally did figure it out. 
uh, and you'll see that here. Use the shutters to make like the interior of the duct house. Um, and then I just grabbed a little thatch roof on top. Uh, all the oh, I guess we're doing the, the floor first. So I finally did figure it out with um, those little sign pieces. Uh, just kind of offsetting them so they weren't doing that like weird clippy um, uh, texture glitch that they do. Got that in there. Then I went off to the workshop and uh, downloaded the Swans mod. Um, so these are the Tundra Swans off of um, the Bio Nexus. Uh, had to add a now. <laughs> they're gonna laugh at me. So here we are doing a whole bunch of trouble, a whole lot of trouble to get this path right. So I'm thinking, I gotta get this thing connected up to the to the main road. I gotta get connected up to the main path to go connect it to our trade center and oh, you know, why don't I just drop a trade center here? <laughs> I was thinking I had to connect it all the way back to the trade center um, back in the uh, the main part of the zoo and obviously did not need to do that. But uh, anyway, uh, so that was, that was our swan habitat. You just saw them get dropped down. Uh, yeah, you saw like a, there's another brief flash of it. These like million and one escape points for the swans. So, <laughs> uh, so I went through and I added more detail work. I'm trying to just add things so that they would not be able to climb out or it would obstruct them enough so that they can't climb out. So I had a whole bunch of bramble over here, a whole bunch of bushes. Um, adding just more detail because so I want this to be a little, also a little bit more of like a centerpiece for the uh, uh, for the farm over here you know like that is like you know if you take a picture in front of the in front of the pond you know that's the, the ooh ah spot thing uh, adding just a little bit more detail work here like I said I want this to be kind of the V spot you know this is the scenic spot for the uh, uh, for the farm here and I mean look they're competing with a botanical garden so they got they got to add something pretty right. Um, obviously, the botanical gardens doesn't have anything yet, but when it does, you know, they're, they're, they'll have a run for their money from our little little farmstead here. Uh, I added a little bit of retaining wall because I didn't like how um, I had not smoothed down the um, uh, the land around, and then went back and moved it down. Anyway, um, I think they must have made some huge modifications to how the water works because I swear that was harder before <laughs> to, to, to make water appear and disappear like that while there's animals and while it's in a habitat and there's paths nearby. So that went like surprisingly well. Um, so they must have made some changes when I wasn't looking. And there, yeah, there are the geese, or not the geese, sorry, the, um, the swans just floating around. Uh, they seem to want to go to the water, so that, that is good. Uh, we're now starting work on our chicken coop. And again, you know, I wanted this to look like the original, you know, this is the original chicken coop from 1880, uh, right here. So it's very basically built. Um, it's got a few modern additions. You know, it's got the chain link, it's got the, the tin roof. Uh, you know, those are probably maybe added later, I want to say, just to give it over, maybe like. 1920 or something, right? Uh, add a little bit of uh, interior detail. Again, we'll add, we'll add the, uh, the the rooster mod uh, and get some uh, roosters in here, some chickens in here. But yeah, this is just kind of a little. Uh, you, know, you pull out your park, and here's a whole bunch of chickens uh, to greet you. You know, <laughs> I thought it would be kind of fun, especially like if you're if you're bringing your kids here. And you're just like, oh, the chickens. You know, um, I don't know. I, I, I think it would be fun. If I, if I was a kid and I saw all those chickens running around, I think that would be awesome. So. <laughs> uh, just kind of making this thing look uh, sturdy and, and like chunky. Again, it's like the original one here, it was built back in the day kind of deal. And then uh, putting our little chicken wire fence around our uh, chain link fence here. I mean, yeah, this is, this is pretty much it for the time lapse. So this is the last part of it. So um, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. Um, drop a like and subscribe uh, if you want to see more. If not, um, I guess, well, we'll just part ways and I'll try myself to sleep.
Um, but <laughs> I hope you stick around for more episodes. And uh, next episode, we should be working 